Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Red Tech Essentials. So today we're gonna study about the anatomy of head. So for convenience, I have divided the head into various parts. So in this video, we're gonna study about the scalp or the various layer which are present between the skin and the bones. And then we're gonna study about the various bone and I have divided the bone into two basic parts, the cranial bone and the facial bone. And then we're gonna look on the sutures or the joints which are present between the bones of the skull. So let's start. To study the anatomy of head, we should start with the skin and then we can to go deep down to the other structures, example bones or the organs, for example, brain. So first of all, take a look on the axial section of the head. So you can see it, these layers. These layers which surround the brain are the bones. So these layers are known as the scalp. So first of all, we should start with the outer layers or the scalp and then we can go deep down to the skull and then the meninges. So first of all, take a look on the coronal section of the head. So you can see it here, the layer of the scalp or the skin of the scalp and then a skull and then the blood vessels and you can see it here so first of all we can look at the layer of the scalp so in this picture you can see it clearly so the scalp refers to the layer of the skin and subcutaneous tissue that covers the bones of the cranial vault so there are five layer of the scalp you can see it here first the skin second subcutaneous tissue epicranial epineurosis loose areolar tissue or the pericranium so first of all we should remember these layers uh, easily because the mnemonic scalp can be a useful way to remember the layers of the scalp as we can remember skin with s subcutaneous tissue or the dense connective tissue with the c epicranial apineurosis or the simple apineurosis with A, loose areolar connective tissue with L and peristeum or pericranium with P. So uh, take a look on the first layer which is known as the skin. Skin contain hair follicles and sebaceous gland. Thus a common site for sebaceous cyst. Our next layer is the subcutaneous tissue or the dense connective tissue. It connects the skin to the epicranial apineurosis. It is richly vascularized and innovated. The blood vessels within the layer are highly adherent to the connective tissue. This renders them unable to constrict fully if lacerated. And so the scalp can be a site of profuse bleeding. Our next layer is the epicranial apineurosis. So it is thin, tendon-like structure. You can see it here. And that connect the occipitalis and frontalis muscle so our next layer is the loose areolar connective tissue it is the thin connective tissue layer that separate the periosteum of the skull from epicranial epineurosis so you can see it here it separates two layers and then it contains numerous blood vessels including amateurie vein you can see it here the amateurie vein which connect the veins of the scalp to the plaque veins and intracranial venous sinuses. Our next layer or the last one is known as the periosteum or the pericranium. It is the outer layer of the skull bone. It becomes continuous with the andiosteum at the suture line. So these were the layer of the scalp and when we go deep down under these layer we can see the cranium, the outer table, the inner table and then we can see underneath this is the meninges you can see it here the dura matter the arachnoid matter and the pia matter and the space between the arachnoid and pia matter is known as the subarachnoid space in which our csf or the cerebrospinal fluid is present so underneath this is start our cerebrum so these were the layers which are present between skin to the brain bones of the skull so there are 22 bones in the skull so I have divided the skull into two basic parts the cranial bone and the facial bone so there are eight cranial bone and 14 facial bone in number so first we start with the cranial bone 
so this one is known as the frontal bone and these two are known as the parietal bone the first parietal and the second parietal you can see it here these are the temporal bone the first temporal and the second temporal and when we look at the back you can see this bone is known as the occipital bone you can see it here clearly the occipital bone and when we see underneath the parietal bone we can see some other bone this one this bone is known as the sphenoid bone or the butterfly shaped bone is known as the sphenoid bone and this one you can see it here is known as the ethmoid bone you can see it here clearly near the orbit this this one is known as the ethmoid bone so these were the bones of the cranium you can see and now take a look on the facial bone so there are 14 facial bone in number so first we start with these one these are the zygomatic bone the first zygomatic bone and the second zygomatic bone are known as the cheekbones and these two are known as the maxilla the first maxilla and the second maxilla and you can see it here the another one the big one and the singular bone is known as the mandible and you can see it here there's a joint between the temporal bone and the mandible is known as the temporal mandibular joint or the tm joint and which is the only movable joint in the skull so the tm joint this one so now take a look on the smaller one so these two bones are known as the nasal bone the first nasal and the second nasal so when we see underneath the maxilla bone we can see some other bones the smaller ones these two bones are known as the palatine bone the first palatine and the second palatine and this bone this is the singular bone you can see it here clearly the singular bone is known as the vomer these two bones are known as the inferior nasal conchi the first inferior nasal conchi and the second inferior nasal conchi and you can see in the last near the orbit these two smaller bones are known as the lacrimal bone the first lacrimal bone and the second lacrimal bone so these were the bones of the skull now take a look on the sutures of the skull so sutures are the fibrous or the immovable joint between the bones of the skull. So there are some basic sutures, the coronal suture, the sagittal suture, the squamous suture and the lambdoid suture. So you can see it here. The suture or the joint between two parietal bone is known as the sagittal suture because it joined the skull in the sagittal section and there is another suture which is the joint between the frontal and the parietal bone is known as the coronal suture you can see it here the coronal suture in the coronal section and when we take a look at the side of the skull you can see it here the joint between the parietal and the temporal bone is known as the squamous suture. You can see it, the squamous suture, this one. And now when we take a look at the occipital bone, you can see it here, the, another joint which is known as the lambdoid suture. So the joint between the parietal and the occipital bone is known as the lambdoid suture or the suture between the parietal and occipital bone is known as the lambdoid suture. So these were the some basic sutures. So now take a look on some other sutures. You can see it here. This one, the joint between the occipital bone and the temporal bone is known as the occipitomastoid suture and joint between the parietal and the temporal or the mastoid process is known as the parietomastoid suture and you can see in front the sutures of the frontal bone or the joint of the frontal bone you can see it here 
the joint between the nasal bone and the frontal bone is known as the frontonasal suture and the joint between the frontal bone to the sphenoid bone is known as the sphenofrontal suture you can see it here and the suture between the sphenoid and the parietal bone is known as the sphenoparietal suture so these were the suture of the skull thank you so now let's continue our topic the anatomy of brain and this my second tutorial so in this tutorial we're gonna study about the managers or the protective covering of the brain and then the brain its various sections the axial the coronal and the sagittal and its various parts and then we're gonna look on the circular villus or the blood supply of the brain and then the cranial nerves. 